Okay, so to get from here to our desired responsive grid, let's first build a little CSS3 media query reporter. I'm going to show you where we've got this set up in our index file. You can see that under styles I've got a main style sheet and then I also have a link to a query reporter that I've made be the file name styles media query reporter CSS. So let's go look at that file. You'll find that it's here in your package of files right there and I've got it open already and so far there's nothing there. And this is where we're going to start to work building a, ourselves a CSS3 reporter that tells us what media query is operational. So if we do a little bit of consulting of our available resources and draw upon a few um, insights from other folks, we're going to find our way there. So I'd like to give some credits to a few people, including Ethan Marcotte and his book Responsive Web Design, the folks at Twitter Bootstrap, and the great folks at HTML5 Boilerplate. We've drawn some insights from them, and of course, obviously, the CSS3 specification. This brings us to the media query. The media query allows us to measure the window width of our uh, browser, and that's the media query we're going to be using for this exercise. And we write this by saying at media only screen and min width of whatever desired width we want to check for. And then after our curly brace, we write our CSS rules nested inside of there and then close it with a closing curly brace. So here's what we can do to set up our media query reporter. I'm going to just type that same media query. Media only screen and min width. I'm going to check for 1024 pixels and see when I'm wider than that. And as I do that, I'm going to go ahead and have it report to me by inserting some content down below the body tag. So I'll actually show up on the page, even though it's technically below the body, but we can do this by saying body after, a little pseudo class, and content. Between the quotes, we need to put what we want it to say, and so I'm simply going to have it say 1024 and up. That's what this is going to report to me. So when we reach a screen width that's wider than 1024 pixels, then we'll have this content inserted after our body tag. Let's see if that happens. Save, refresh, and there it is. You have to look way down here in the bottom left, but it's there. So I'm going to make this report a little bit more loudly. And I'm going to set it up so this will apply to all of my body after elements. So I'm going to set up a basic rule just for body after without the media query because I'm going to create some more media queries in just a little bit. And so for all of them, I'm going to have these have a larger font size, for one thing. Font size of, say, 300%. Um, Can't type tonight. And font weight bold. And I'd like to have these things show up at the bottom of my window and stay there, planted there, even as I scroll around and then to have some um, a bar that sort of sets it off from the content. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put uh, uh, position fixed on this and I'm going to position it at the bottom, maybe just 60 pixels off the bottom so I can see underneath it a little bit. And then we're going to give it some background color. I'm going to use HSLA here, and let's start with one on the color wheel and give it 60% saturation, 40% brightness, and I'm going to give it a 0 
0 0.7 of alpha transparency. Let's see what this does for us so far. Save that. And now refresh. Oh, it's starting to take shape. It's fixed, but it's not doing exactly what I want it to yet. I'm going to make this thing be wider. So I'm going to do a width of 100, 100%, and text align center. All right, so we've got font size 300%, font weight bold, position fixed, bottom 60 pixels, width 100%, text align center, and some background color. Save, go back now and refresh. There we go, that's worth something. I think I'd like to make that font a different color, maybe white. So I'll go ahead and insert in here color white. There, now well, it's starting to take shape. Now this is only coming into effect again when we're reaching above 1024 pixels, so when I go narrower, that's going to disappear. What I'd like to do is have it tell me where I'm at now. Less than 1024. I'd like to set up a media query that uh, is between 768 pixels and 1024. So, let's repeat our first media query. I'm going to delete some of the white space here so I don't have to repeat so many lines, and I'm going to leave this at bottom. If I leave this first rule that's measuring when we're above 1024 pixels, if we leave it for last, then it's going to override the previous rules only when we get to that width. Now prior to that, we want to check for here 768 pixels wide. So I'm going to change 1024 to 768 in this case. And I'm going to now change my content on that to read 768 to 1024 pixels. There we go. Save. Now refresh. And now it's telling us when we're down below 768. I'd like to go and have it report to me when I'm even narrower, so let's do that. Copy, paste. Let's go for 480 in this case. So I'm going to type in 480, and I'm going to make this read 480 to 768 pixels. Save, refresh, so now we're getting reported at 768, and keep going narrower, 480. Okay, I'm going to do this twice more, and then I'd like to add another little touch. So we want to know when we're going below 480, and so I'm going to put another break between 320 and 480. So now this one's going to say min width of 320 pixels, and it's going to be reporting to us when we're between 320 to 480 pixels. Now finally I want this to tell me when I'm below 320, and I can do that without a media query. We're going to add this just to the basic styles because we've got rules that are covering everything larger than 320. So our basic style up here can have this report that we're below 320. So I'm going to copy just the content portion now and include this in my body after selector that's outside of the media queries. So now by default, standard body after is going to get content that will say less than 320 pixels. Let's see if that works. Zoom out, refresh. So 1024, 768 to 1024, 480, 320, and less than 320.
that works pretty well, but I'd like to have it vary in color when I do this so I can more quickly recognize that transition. So I'm going to make that bar change in its background color. So I'm going to take this line where I've got the background color in HSLA values, and this will make it easy to copy that and paste it and have it simply change its value by changing the place we're selecting on the color wheel. So I'm going to go in increments of 90. So my rule for my 320 pixel min width selector media query that is is going to start out with 90. I'm going to copy that and go down and paste this. Let me get over here to the left. There we go. And then we'll make this be 180. And now for 768 media query, we're going to make that be 270. And then for our last media query at 1024 pixels, we're going to make this be back to 360 all the way around the color wheel. All right, save that. Check it out. We've got 90, 180, 270, and 360. The rest of the values are the same for each of those. Zoom out, save, go to our browser, and refresh. And now when we make these transitions, our bar is going to change in color. So we go down to purple when we hit 768 to 1024. When we get below 768, it turns a nice green. Then a different shade of green when we get between 320 to 480, and then back to red when we're less than 320. I think that's a handy little tool, and we're going to use that now to help us determine when we'd like to set up media queries to modify the way our spans work in our grid here, while we work on making that fluid and responsive. We'll be back with that in just a second.